Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Automated airspace authorizations coming. Suspected drone strike in Australia turns out to be a bat. And draft regulations for UAS operations released by the Government of Canada. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. Greatly anticipated, it appears that this fall, some 50 airports will begin providing low altitude authorization and notification capability, which will give UAS operators the ability to, quote, apply for instant digital approval to fly in U.S. controlled airspace using the same applications they use for flight planning and in-flight situational awareness. Currently, FAA authorization is required for flights in controlled airspace at certain times of the day or near sensitive locations. Authorization requests are subject to long waiting periods and labor-intensive manual approvals, which can add more time to or entirely halt the process of commercial UAS operations. The FAA enlisted the help of 12 companies to evaluate how third-party vendors can help the administration provide automated authorization for safer and more efficient UAS operations at scale. AirMap co-founder Greg McNeil says that the LAANC project is the first step in the implementation of unmanned traffic management, which is the, quote, federated technological infrastructure that will facilitate data exchange and air traffic control for drones. LAANC began this summer with the FAA's release of UAS facility maps that show specific areas and altitudes near 300 plus airports where UAS operators can request airspace authorization more effectively and efficiently. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. A UAS with a 40-inch by 10-inch full-color Luminex 360 display sign attached to it is believed to be the world's first digital drone billboard. Developed by Central Floridian Bobby Watts, the UAS, known as the Drobatron, DL-1200 drone is used to display video clips, still photos, and text. A film crew making a video promoting Dutch Harbor, Alaska, lost a drone recently during the filming when it was attacked by an eagle over the water. Drone operator Emmett Fitch was assisting the crew from Nevada with the shoot when his pilot suddenly lost contact with the aircraft, which was about a mile from the operator. He tried in vain to regain control of the drone and bring it back to no avail. Self-driving and wireless connected cars are heading to the roads in Virginia after the Commonwealth Transportation Board approved the testing of these vehicles in high occupancy toll lanes on Interstate 95 and 495 in Northern Virginia. Initially, the cars will be tested on closed roads, but eventually they will be tested during light traffic times. According to the VDOT Research Director, Kathy McGee, Fellow occupants on the road should not notice anything unusual once these self-driving vehicles begin testing. On Wednesday, July 19th, the Harvey County Sheriff's Office in Kansas used a UAS to locate a missing elderly man who had been reported missing by his family. The UAS located the 91-year-old man approximately 12 hours after he had been reported missing. The man was found dehydrated and with possible injuries but he is alive and is receiving treatment at a local medical facility. According to Harvey County Sheriff Chad Gay, the UAS was integral to saving this man's life. As you may be aware, Airborne Unmanned is part of the Aero News Network's many news offerings that cover all aspects of aviation and aerospace. We're starting a search for an additional news editor, especially one with unmanned technology expertise, as well as a sales and marketing staffer to support our mini news and feature programs. For more information, send an email to jim at news.net. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. When a student pilot and instructor approaching Parafield Airport in South Australia felt something hit the wing of the Cicada Tobago aircraft they were flying one night, they initially thought they had hit a bird. But when the instructor examined the damaged right wing of the airplane after landing and did not discover any overt biological evidence, he called the tower and reported that he might have hit a drone. 
that got the attention of a lot of people and initiated an ATSB investigation and started another media frenzy. But it turned out to be something natural after all. Not a bird, but a bat. According to the ATSB's final report on the matter, the ATSB conducted an inspection of the aircraft and swab samples of the impact areas were taken by the airport operator and sent to the Australian Museum for DNA testing. The subsequent DNA test results indicated the sample was most consistent with that of a gray-headed flying fox from the bat family. The ATSB has assessed that there is little potential for the enhancement of transport safety through further investigation of this occurrence. The ATSB has discontinued this investigation. Unmanned Systems Canada has announced that Canada has released draft regulations for UAS operations for public comment. The milestone announcement will reportedly, quote, establish a regulatory environment for UAS operations within visual line of sight, which will build off procedures developed and refined over the last decade. An Unmanned Systems Canada representative said that, quote, the announcement lays the groundwork for continuing to open up Canada's industry through our regulatory process. With 1,000 companies established in this dynamic new Canadian industrial sector, today's regulatory announcement will further mature and enable our industry to move forward to safely and effectively implement new technologies in numerous markets, driving the creation of new high-quality jobs and economic growth. In anticipation of the development of a burgeoning new commercial market in Canada, Unmanned Systems Canada initiated formal discussions with Transport Canada 11 years ago to develop UAS regulations. Over this course of time, Transport Canada has issued approximately 10,000 special operating certificates for commercial UAS operations under regulatory guidelines, and over the last four years, there has been a rapid increase in approvals. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.